Proverbs chapter 25 tonight. A longer section for us, longer section for us tonight, verses 8 through 10, even though almost all commentators put the last phrase of verse 7 with these verses. Remember, the, the verse divisions are not inspired. So most would translate it something like that which thine eyes have seen, verse 8 now, go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof. When thy neighbor hath put thee to shame, debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth put thee to shame, and thy infamy, infamy turn not away. We won't get to verse 11 tonight, but in that same context, verse 11, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver, and as an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. That in, in our verses tonight, we're really talking about misusing words, and in those verses that we'll get to in a couple of weeks, we talk about using our words well. So tonight, we are going to think about that all too common occurrence when somebody does something you don't like. Maybe somebody is playing with your favorite toy. I need a volunteer. Thank you, Josie, for volunteering. Come up here. By way of, of illustration. Okay. I have, no, no, don't go too far. Just, like stand right here, stand right, right there. I have a sheet of paper, hold the sheet of paper, and I have the scissors. Yes, these are the scissors from the kitchen. We will put them back right away after the service, nobody panic. Take these scissors, and I need you to cut this paper. This paper is too long, so I need you to cut it, cut it like right, right there. Oh, wait. No, 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 that's too short. I, I need it a little bit further. Can you, can you, oh no. All right, can you go ahead and fix that? Can you recut it or something? No. <laughs> All right, thank you, sit down. Hezekiah, can we make this paper longer? Can we make it longer? No, we can't make this paper longer. And there's a, an adage that I first heard my grandfather tell me. Do you know what it is, Micah? No. Measure twice and cut. Or measure once and go back to the hardware store. That's, that's my version of it. Right? If, if this was a piece of wood and we needed it to make a fork, but we cut it too short. Could we use it, Hezzy? Yeah. No, it would be basically ruined if we had a piece of fabric, Sophie, that we were gonna make a dress out of and we cut it too short. Could we use it? Yeah, you know, you can get around some of those things different ways, but you know, the idea being that you need to, to think carefully before you cut something, because you can't put it back together. And, we should think about our words that way. So Hezekiah, I'm gonna ask you a question and I want you to talk into the mic and tell everybody the right answer, okay? We didn't rehearse this at home. If Obadiah has your car, what should you do? I should get help. No, what should you do first if, if he has your car? The first thing you should do. Um, say can I please have that back? Yes, you should say, can I please have that back? And when he says no, what should you do? Get help. Yeah. All right. You can get help then, maybe. But what else maybe you could do? You could say what? What else could you say to Obi? I could say, can I please have that back? And if he still says no, I do. 
But you could also say, when you're done with it, let me have it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a step. Now, in our house, most of the toys are communal in nature. Not that we're communists or anything, but that uh, we, we, most of the toys end up being shared, right, Micah? And a toy will go four, five, six months with never being played with, and as soon as one person picks it up, what happens? Everybody wants it. World War III breaks out over the toy that has been lost, not played with, not loved, and then all of a sudden everybody wants it. And uh, sometimes I, I get this thing of, that's mine. Oh, it is? Yeah, and then the other, no, it's mine. Well, whose is it? Uh, and and how, how do we, we work through that? And we, before we go and get somebody else involved, we should be nice, we should be kind, and try and work through it, right? Right, guys? The easiest thing to say is, well, when you're done with it, can I have it? Uh, by the way, I don't know of a single situation where when they were actually done with it, they gave it to the other person. Oh, I, I take that back. I guess that happens a few times. But a, a lot of times, uh, once you're done with it, can I have it back? And then it's like almost two seconds and give it back or everybody forgets about it. But you know, that, that's a good illustration for our, our proverb tonight. That in verse 8, we are told that we need to be cautious before going to court. The word that is, is translated as strive in verse 8 says, go not forth hastily to strive. The word strife means to start legal proceedings. To take it to the court. So it would be the kids coming to mom or dad. It would be a, a worker taking it to their boss. It would be a, a condo association, you know, taking it to the president or what, you know, whatever. Whatever situation you're in, you just run it up very quickly to the authority. And we're told to not do that hastily. To not do that quickly. To not have that be our knee-jerk reaction. You know, I think in many ways there's a parallel in the New Testament. James chapter 1 verse 19. Anybody know off the top of their head what that verse is? As soon as I start reciting it, you'll remember it. It's the one that says, my beloved brethren. What? No, it's the one about being, let's see, I'm, now I'm, I'm messing it up myself. It's the one about being slow. No, that's not it, Josie. All right, we're going to turn there so I don't mess it up anymore. So it's swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Did we get it? Finally get it? Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, slow to anger. Now, I'm going to reorder it a little bit here. Why do people go to court? Why do you think, Sophie? Okay, because they did something wrong. But why do, why do people sue other people? It's not when you've broken a law. Do you know Josie? Yeah, a lot of times they get there because they've been angry. They're upset. Now, and this verse is about somebody who does it really quick, who, who goes very quickly. Something happens, and when you get angry, what do you want to do when you're angry? You just want to get even, right? You want to get your pound of flesh. Somebody's done something against you, and now you want to retaliate. And it says, go not forth hastily to strive, do not go forth hastily to court, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Now, in, in a lot of ways, if you're going to go to court, and you're going to start those official proceedings, what do you have to do? You have to state your case. And, well, you should get the facts, but we're going hastily, we're going speedily, we're not doing this 
thoughtfully, we're just going there, and we just show up, and now we, we, we have to be quick to speak, which is the, uh, another thing that we're told not to do. And, and one of the things that happens in, in these situations, when somebody has come hastily, they're acting in anger, they're, they're coming quickly, they usually present their case as if they're the 100% innocent party. Right? My favorite example is, you know, one of the kids comes, Micah hit me. I'm naming names tonight. Micah hit me. And then, you, you, oh man, why did Micah hit you? It turns out they were choking Micah, he couldn't breathe, so he's trying to tell them to get off. And he hit a little hard, right? Something like that. That didn't actually happen did it today. No. Okay. But, um, you know, the, the idea being that that first person that comes seems right. But when you overstate your case, the next person comes, pokes holes in your case, and that makes everything sort of questionable, doesn't it? That makes everything uh, not right. And it's a situation here that's become combative, and it's not about reconciliation anymore. It's not about peace. It's not about helping that other person or getting through something. It, it's not even about, and, and look, sometimes situations come up where uh, the, our last recourse, especially if we're dealing with an unbeliever, we might have to go to court. There, 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 there are places and there's a time for that. But we always have to count the cost. We also have, always have to think through everything. Be careful. What other avenues do we have? The Lord Jesus Christ talked about this in Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verses 57 through 59. Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him. Lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might. Jesus there is exhorting us, reconcile it on your own. As much as lies within you, live peaceably with men. As, as much as we're able to, to work through these things in an individual way, a private way. As soon as it comes to court, it becomes public. My favorite headline all time, woman sues church for telling about her sin. I read about it on foxnews.com. This woman had committed adultery, the church had excommunicated her, the church had announced it, and so she sued the church because she was embarrassed. Because everybody knew her business. Now I, who don't even know this person at all, know what she did because she sued them and put it all over Facebook. And it was this, this case about can churches, can churches do that? Well, this is what the Bible tells us to do. It's, it's what is, is a part of even understanding what the discipline of the church looks like. And this woman who was upset that people had been told her business then goes and sues and tells everybody her business. And it's all over the news. Instead, these verses tell us that we need for a private court. If you look at verse 9, it says, Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another. What, what I find so interesting about this verse is debate and strive are the exact same Hebrew verb. They're the same verb. So in essence, what he's saying, don't take it to the court, but take it to your neighbor and take it and act like a court, but now thoughtfully. Go and be swift to hear. Go and be swift to hear. Go, I, this is what I think happened. Here's my concern, here's my issue, but what's your point of view? What, what, give, give your neighbor a chance to explain. Give the person who's offended you a chance to explain. Give the person who maybe has done something to you a, an opportunity to, to make it right. I, I don't have any stats on um, 
you know, how many times it's truly a miscommunication, but the number of times that interpersonal conflict is driven by miscommunication is staggering to me. Oh, you said this thing. Well, I, I was trying to make a joke, or that's, that's not what I meant to say. Um, Technology's great today, isn't it? Because if I misspeak right now, we have it recorded in three different places, turns out. We can go see what I actually said. Sometimes I say what I meant to say, and people mishear. Sometimes you mishear, or I, I misspeak, and you've heard correctly. Um, I was looking at, I said something about uh, the, the pray to prayer phrase in James. I said this is a Hebrew construction. And if you just listen to that, James was written in Greek, but it was like a Hebrew construction is what I was trying, or trying to get at. You, you, can, you can say things that get misunderstood, all sorts of things. But if you go privately, the situation can often be handled right there. And it, it go and, and have that private court. The other thing that I'd point out is, is a lot of times it might take two or three times to work through things. And, and one of the things that in, in these situations often work through, need to work through, is just because somebody doesn't agree with you, like you think about giving advice to someone. You give advice, they might hear you, they might process it, they might listen to it, but then they might choose to do something else for another reason. Maybe they got other advice or something like that. And we can't be greatly offended at that as, as they work through that process. You know, the, the Bible tells us that love covers a multitude of sin. And in, in one sense, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's this 1 Peter 4 passage. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, which says... Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. The word charity is the word love. And above all, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sins. Now in one sense, when we say love's gonna cover a sin, somebody has perhaps said something rude, somebody has done something to, against you, and you can say, you know what, that's not part of their character. That's not, that's not a sin that, that has entrapped them. That's just, you know, it was just a moment. I don't need to worry about it. And, and you have to make that judgment. Sometimes if it's, if it's a character flaw, we, we need to help people through that. But always we need to be driven by love. And we need to, even in that private conversation, we can express that so much better than when we have taken it up the level or we've told other people about it. We've committed gossip about it. You know, it's been several years ago, but right before a Sunday morning service, one of our members came to me and said, I need to talk to you because I, I can't deal with this other member in the church. And I said, okay, okay, well, you know, obviously I can't talk to you right now. Piano's playing, we've, we've got to go, but um, how, how about we talk tomorrow? He says, okay, we'll talk tomorrow. And I, I said, I didn't tell anybody. I asked the elders, just pray. There's a potential conflict. I don't know any details. Just, just pray generally. I didn't name names. When I called him on Monday, he told me, hey, your sermon dealt exactly with the problem. Never mind. I can handle it myself. And as far as I know, that never came up again. But you know, it was dealt with privately. And even as the, the word was preached, and sometimes I feel compelled just to let everybody know. I don't usually change my sermons because somebody said something to me on Thursday. I'm gonna say, I've never done that. Um, uh, and and you know, sometimes you know, people say, oh, how did you know? Or that dealt exactly with this situation. And it's the leading of the Lord. It's the guidance of the Lord. We give the Lord all the, all the glory there. Um, but you know, if we just immediately go and tell other people about it and get all mad about it, get all worked up about it, and never give ourselves time to think. Never give ourselves time to process. Never even allow an opportunity for that other person to, to explain how much drama 
Do we stir up? I mean, that's, that's the word I sometimes use, drama. How much conflict do we bring in because we just didn't deal with going to the right person? And, and when you've talked to other people about it, what comes really hard? Now you've got to remember everybody you talk to, and if it got worked out, you need to go back and tell everybody you talk to, and then they've got to tell everybody they talk to, and if we've been gossiping about it, an issue that got resolved from the original parties may linger forever just out there because it's not being dealt with the right, the right way privately and graciously. Uh, I saw this statistic. I, I follow this website called Church Answers. And, and they do a lot of good research and in, in looking into churches and things like that. And, and one of their recent articles, they talked about the, what they call the life cycle of a pastor. So when a pastor comes to a church, there is the honeymoon period where everybody loves the guy. And then there's the years of opposition and where things don't go quite as well. And then uh, it either gets better or the guy leaves. And then you have a, period, a good period. The, the fascinating thing to me was that the honeymoon period as far as they can tell, is shorter than it's ever been. Measured in weeks and months where it used to be a year. Why is that? I, my, my thought is we're living in the on-demand society. How long do you have to wait for your favorite meal? How long do you have to wait for your favorite show? How many, you know, you, you get everything you want right then, and so everybody is now, 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 in this moment, right now, right away, and not even give an opportunity. Uh, on two occasions, or three occasions, I had somebody come visit our congregation. I start preaching, and they don't let me get past the opening illustration, and they storm out. And uh, I've been able to find out that they were upset because I had an opening illustration. I should have just gotten to my point right away. But, well, you, let me get there. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, you didn't talk about Jesus. Well, I, I just started. I'm, I'm going to get there. But we're impatient, more impatient. Somebody sins against us. We want to win that battle right away. And that's not what the Bible calls us to. That's not what relationships are about. They're going privately. You see even the destructive nature of gossip in, in verse 10 of Proverbs 25. And it begins at the second half of verse 9. When it says, discover not a secret to another. The idea there is don't tell, your, don't tell the secret to another. Don't publish that secret to somebody else. If you've been given something in confidence... Or in the context, you dealt with this issue privately. You don't need to go tell other people about it. Because what happens, verse 10, lest he that heareth put thee to shame. You know, the, the idea of damaged relationships that come up because of that. You know, you've been entrusted with a secret or this, this situation and now they've heard it and there's shame that comes. There's damage in the relationship. Uh, gossip damages not only the person you're gossiping about, but, but yourself. Because the, the second half, thy infamy, and thy infamy turn not away. That there's even a, a ruined reputation that comes as a result of that. If you're, if you're known as somebody that complains all the time, if you're known as somebody that, that talks about other people all the time, that gets known, that, and that becomes an issue, and that, that destroys churches that destroys families, that destroys relationships, that we have an enemy who's a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And he loves it when there's dissension in the church. We have our own sinful flesh that we're fighting against too. We have the worldly system we're fighting against. And we've been given the gospel so that we can go and deal with these things so that we have hope, so that we can go privately, so that love can cover a multitude of sin. May we hear again the, 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 the words of the scriptures here, that we would not be quick to court 
but we would go and we would deal with issues privately with the one that, that it needs to be dealt with. May our words be thoughtful. May we think before we speak and our words could be described as an apples of gold in a setting of silver. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that we, when we sin, we have the answer to our sin, which is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just ask, Father, that you would help us to serve you, that you would help us to be careful with our speech, to use our words to build up. Father, may we be slow to speak, slow to anger, and quick to hear. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.